He's a newly minted knight and a man who's passionate about decreasing the stigma around mental illness. We're in Italy with Sir John Kerwin for an intimate conversation and a story of hope. Depression and anxiety is about fear, raw fear, a series of very, very scary thoughts that are controlling you. So it's just like being out of control in your head. For me, playing badly in an all-black jersey was an absolute disaster. I used to go to training and think, thought that everyone was watching me and they knew that I was depressed. Until the illness got stronger, then I didn't really care about the football. It was just about survival. Uh, anxiety attacks might take two minutes. They feel like three days. You're in, always in intention. He was and still is one of New Zealand's great rugby heroes. But today, Treviso in Northern Italy is where Sir John Kerwin calls home. Well, I first came here when I was 20. And then I met my, my wife who didn't speak any English. Uh -huh. So you're sort of forced <laughs> to uh, extend your vocab. Mm -hmm. As John came to terms with his much publicised depression, he also discovered this Italian town as a haven. Questa mia amica Tania, che viene di Nuova Zelanda. Principe. This is the prince. The prince. He's developed firm friends and likes that emotions are freely expressed here. <laughs> <laughs> so Lele used to look after all the all the rugby players. So we'd all come in and he'd give us fruit and vegetables. Like this is asparagus season here. John's been based here for the last 10 years. He travels the globe for his job coaching rugby and back to New Zealand where he passionately supports others with mental health issues. <laughs> When you're in depression, you don't feel normal. You feel very isolated. You feel very um, that it's personal, that it's, that it's yours. You feel weak. You lose your confidence. And so you have a series of things happening to you all at once that depression gives you that just flatlines you, you know? Come, come, sono le, le fragole quest'anno. Sì? Would you like some? I'll try a strawberry. Vuole uno di provare. He said that uh, instead of giving you flowers, he's giving you fragole. Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> John shares the household he's cooking. The morning market is part of a lifestyle where simple everyday pleasures are built into a plan for wellness. So the white stuff um, you boil and just have a little bit of oil and boiled eggs. Yeah, oh nice. But then this troppo, troppo lele, dai. No, ma qua puoi fare il risotto pure il pasticcio. He said this one is from Treviso area mm -hmm. and it's best in a, uh, in a risotto. Si, <laughs> fatto però. Sai, andiamo. When I was unwell, I went on this really fun journey. I made it a bit of fun, you know, finding out what was good for me to make me mentally relaxed, so. What, what gave you that 
kind of relaxation? How did you find out that this is the kind of thing that keeps you level? Just kept trying, mm -hmm. you know, just kept trying stuff. I mean, I tried everything. I tried uh, meditation, tried everything, with very much with an open mind. And what I sort of found out for me was that I'm a re very active relaxer. I see with like all the vegetables, like taking the time to sort of look at them and smell the roses. So yeah, no, it's it's about more it. about people. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you know, it's it'd probably be more about Lele. Yeah. And you know, and um, with with the cooking, it's more about the process. He treats the stroll to and from the market as a chance to chill. And when he stops for coffee, it's not just the caffeine he's craving. Allora. Ah. There you go, there you go, there you go. Yeah. Like, you know, sometimes you sit there and you drink the coffee, but this is about stopping and enjoying the moment. So you've got to be careful because you're... I can imagine, and it's know, only small, like, so you Come and meet him, mm -hmm. come and have a coffee, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Come and see someone else have a coffee. So. Exactly. But then if you say water, it just... No, I can imagine people would be like, what's wrong with you? It doesn't, yeah. walk, doesn't walk. And like, he's... That they're all making fun and just, yeah. you know, having a really good laugh. So, used to, used to do this a lot. Be a bit more light-hearted, perhaps. Yeah, you know, exactly. Just yeah. see see what's around you, rather than. You know. <laughs> he said he's been, it's very very hard for him not to swear in the local dialect here, so he's trying to be nice. Lele, non ti lascia sedere, devo sedere io qua che faccio. He just said, let, let the old guys sit down. Aww. The young guys going to stand up. <laughs> The whole shop's going to come out and say congrats, goodbye congrats. to New Zealand, so, <laughs> and to you. Well, saluto, ciao. Thank you. Ciao. Thank you so ciao. much. Ciao. 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 <laughs> ciao. <laughs> no matter how busy his schedule is, John knows it's vital to take time out. He knows it's not always easy, but a healthy mind depends on it. And that's his message for everyone. Ah, I <laughs> love it. <laughs> Growing up in New Zealand, we had Indian food and uh, Indonesian food, Chinese food, but here in Italy, you don't get it. So I don't really risk cooking Italian because they're so good at it. So what I've done to sort of make up for it is uh, I cook a lot of curries and Indonesian food. The first thing you have to get used to in, in Italy is they totally criticise what you, you know, like you can sit down at dinner and the guests will say, oh, it's... It's not that great. Yeah. <laughs> he can joke about that now, probably because he's mastered the cooking. And he's well. But when he was in the depths of his depression, criticism was paralysing for John. There's a whole lot of little things that if I say, oh, don't be bloody stupid, mm -hmm. harden up, mm -hmm. right at that moment, if you're not feeling well, that can be dramatic. Yeah. Just like when Michael Jones said to me one day, you've got a great heart, JK. Mm -hmm. Well, I clung, I was, I was in such bad shape that day, I clung on to those words and, words, and they're very special words for me mm -hmm. because it got me through a really bad day. I say to my kids, you know, it's okay to cry when it's emotional, if you're a male. So, you know, if you're upset, it's okay to cry. It's something that I never did. However, if you get knocked over on the football field or, you know, something, that you've, then you've got to toughen up. So there's being a man is important that you're, that you're tough physically, mm -hmm. uh, but also soft psychologically. So, you know, if you're upset, if your spirit's upset and your soul's upset, it's okay to cry. Whereas I think, Maybe my generation was just hard enough right across the board. So, um, you know, communicating those things is important. Luca finishes at one, but we took them all to school. Normally they go on the bike. Ah, uh, yep. Mm -hmm. so, and Colin Meads is here, they'd say harden up. But they wouldn't be saying, you know, harden up as if, you know, you should be hardened. It's sort of, 
what it really means is, you know, you'll get through it, try and tough it out, you know, it's so hard in there that you're just trying to get through sometimes the minute, you know, and then you're trying to get through the hour, then you're trying to get through the day. So often you can push people away or the people around you don't understand. So sometimes I think the communication when people don't understand can be taken in, in, in many different forms. And so I think that for me, for those that are watching this that have loved ones and you don't know what to do, I think just accept, um, you know, what is love? Love is unconditional. It's very common in some of the symptoms, but very personalised as well. So some of your inner thoughts, you're too scared to share with the, you know, with the person next to you. But it, it is an illness. There's a lot of stigma as well associated with it, isn't there? That's why people sort of tend to mask it and tend to say, you know, I'm doing okay. Yeah, if I'd have had help a lot quicker, and if there had been more understanding about it, I wouldn't have beaten myself up so much, and the journey wouldn't have been as as long or as hard. You know, I know I totally refused to accept it for a couple of years. One of the other questions I get asked all the time is, did you take pills? Yeah, well, I did. Did I like myself for it? No. But at the end of the day, if you had another illness, if you had diabetes, you've got to inject yourself every day. That's just part of the illness. So I think more understanding about the illness and more people get to know um, the symptoms and understand it, then they can really, you know, um, accept it and do what they need to do through the illness to get well. The dad, the butcher, the accountant, they all care about what people think, you know, or what people's perceptions of them are. You know, they don't want to let their family down, they don't want to let their boss down, they don't want to let, you know, that is, yeah. I suppose that is the same for everybody, isn't it? Well, They've, I felt it. I mean, yeah. you, you know, um, you hear about some people who who maybe have had a business problem, lost all their money, people say, well, it's only bloody money. Mm -hmm. But you cannot relate that to yourself, you know. It, it might have been the most important thing in that person's life, that he might have associated money with failure. You know, if, you, if I said to you, oh, you know, you lost an all-black game and you knocked the ball on, you'd say, well, so what? But for me, at that stage, it might have been the biggest disaster ever. John's three children are in school and come home for their lunch break. So the kids expect a, a cooked meal when they come home from school? Is this yeah, lun lunchtime is really the Italian thing. Mm -hmm. Like, we're all together at lunch. So tonight, <laughs> yeah, right, like, Luca finishes at 1. The others finish at 1.30. They'll come home, they'll come home for lunch. And then, uh, you know, they'll study in the afternoon and then in the evenings there's sort of sport, so it'll be a little bit different. For John, recognising he was unwell was the first step. Once I accepted it, I actually started getting better instantly. It was incredible. That was probably the best afternoon I've ever, I'd had in three years. Once I accepted the, the illness and then started on, on the getting well road, I, I made it a little bit of fun. Mm -hmm. So I said to myself, uh, you know, uh, how am I going to get the, the time in my head that is going to give me some mental relief? He started writing and talking. His services to a major mental health campaign launched six years ago led to his knighthood. He was initially scared to bear his soul but believed Kiwis needed to talk more openly about depression. The, the most interesting thing for me was that I was scared to do it. I didn't want to do it because I thought people would judge me and see me as weak. And the awareness campaign was incredible. You know, I'd have people um, sort of whispering back then, you know, not so much coming out and saying, just whispering, oh, you know, I've been a bit depressed myself, <laughs> that sort of stuff. <laughs> And then I said, if, I, if this is what I've got, I want to be the best at it, because that's my personality. <laughs> so then I started on this, on this journey of what I call wellness, you know, being as well as I can be.
5.30 a.m. The family is soundly sleeping and John is at the local swimming pool. In his professional life, John is the coach. He first coached the Italian national rugby team, then the Japanese side. But here he takes instruction from a former Olympic swimming coach. The coach makes it his business to mould John's mind as well as his muscle. He's a strong, he's very strong. When he's tired, when he's tired. No, when you're tired, why? John's training for gruelling long-distance ocean swims. The goal? To raise money for athletes disabled through playing rugby. The morning swim sessions are part therapy for John too. His coach is wise and inspires John. I imparato a conoscere se stesso. An athlete learns to understand himself. Ha imparato a dominare le proprie energie e quindi è, ha più disciplina. And so as an athlete you learn to dominate um, your energy. Il regbista nell'azione massima, al massimo al culmine dell'azione, il regbista esprime energia esplosiva, aggressiva. So when, when a rugby player is at his height, he shows his um, energy, everything outwards and aggressively, so everything's aggressive. Invece in, in, nell'acqua, in, on the water, nell'acqua bisogna essere molto cauti, molto prudenti e risparmiare energia. And, uh, in, 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 in water it's, it's very different, you have to be very prudent and you have to um, look after your energy and make sure you conserve that energy. Questo è fondamentale. That's the biggest difference. E questa è la, è la maggiore difficoltà sua. <laughs> and this is my problem. This is my biggest problem. So... <laughs> Quindi, se impara a fare questo, riesce a fare, a, a fare una conquista. Se riesce a fare questo, riesce a fare una nuova conquista. Perché l'acqua è un avversario troppo forte. Non è possibile battere l'acqua. So, he said, if I can actually... Um, get on top of this problem uh, because when I get tired I go to aggression and water is an enemy that you'll never beat so you have to be with one with the water so when I get tired I tend to grip my teeth whereas I need to devo dire devo dire che lui è molto disciplinato but I have good discipline so I'm uh, working he's just Questo being nice now <laughs> You're looking quite tired after after swimming today. Yeah, I suffered this morning. <laughs> you know, I really enjoy every day now, and uh, I still set my goals for the future. But I don't worry too much about the past, and uh, I don't worry too much about the future once I've set my goals. Mm -hmm. And just enjoy myself. We have a laugh every morning, and but it's also good to have, you know a bit of sufferance in, in, in the pool and work off a bit of the salami I ate yesterday. <laughs> so, yeah, that's good. That's a good life. I think it's what he's also. Depression struck when John was at the height of his rugby career. Today, as a coach, he's tough, but he allows his softer side to come through. He looks out for his players.
as a coach, I want the players under me to have the best times of their lives. So to do that, you need to be challenged. To do that, you need honesty. To do that, you, know, you, you, know, you need to try and be the best that you can be every day. Uh, sometimes it's not nice. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'll have to say things to you that um, are going to upset you but will make you better. Sometimes I'll be angry with you if I don't think you're giving 100% because it's about giving 100% all the time. My job is to make you the best that you can be so that when you're my age and you look back on your career, you say, I have no regrets. You know, I gave it my best shot. Yeah, good, try the other side. Yeah, good. If, if it wasn't my son, if I was coaching, and you can have a lot of fun. It's just a little game we used to play a lot. Little Zinzan Brook used to play it, and Robin Brook used to play it a lot. Just, you know, accuracy of pass. One all. Son Luca is getting oh. some of the best coaching a kid could get. But there's no expectation to follow in his dad's footsteps. I get this, it's 2-1. Bring it, 2-1. He's really keen on footy, but I don't want to put too much pressure on him. You know? I just want him to enjoy it. Yeah. So. It's one of those hard ones, I guess. I can imagine, and you want to sort of ride, you'd want to ride that clutch, think, am I doing it? You know, protecting him from the pressure that he might have, being your, being your boy. Yeah, it's a, it's a, like I said, it's a real hard one, you know? Like, there's plenty of sons of players that have gone through to play at the highest level, so um, it's just really important, like, it doesn't matter if you don't become an All Black, but if you want to be an All Black, you've got to try. Mm. So if you try your best and you don't make it, well, that's better than not trying, because I think sometimes, you know, when, um, when, when some things seem unsurmountable, it's easier not to try. Get this, it's too all. Nice. Ah. Three, two, to you. Pressure's on. Oh, bringing it home. <laughs> because of what I've been through then, I'm very open about um, mental health. And, you know, the Luca and Nico and Francesca know about mental health and what it is, so I explain it at a young age. And it's just uh, something that they get, you know, they understand that it's normal. Competition. Hands out. Ah, oh, no. That's ridiculous, John. As rugby players are expected to be tough, right? Mentally and physically. Is that? Yeah, well, I think I think uh, that's a little bit unfair on the sport as of today because I think that uh, rugby players need to be mentally tough, just like any other sportsman. But then I think um, you know this harden up thing. Um, is a society thing. You know, rugby was rugby racing and beer uh, 25, 30 years ago. And, and society has continued to change. I, I would say that there, there's probably been a lack of communication um, or a lack of, of showing emotion between father and son 40 years ago because that was the generation. One of the reasons why we set off on this journey of um, trying to break down the stigma was because it was more my self, you know. Pressure you're putting think, on yourself. Yeah, weakness, mm -hmm. um, you know, this is a weakness of mine. I've got absolutely no right to be unwell. I'm an all black, you know, happy, what's wrong, you know. So it was more about an, an no understanding from my point of view. Sir John Kerwin was one of the greatest rugby wingers the world has ever seen. But it's the depression that has shaped him in ways he could never have imagined. There's certainly something amazing you can take out of that experience. What was it for you? That... I just think I'm a better person. You know, I just think I'm um, really, really aware of myself. So I understand fully uh, myself. I can um, work harder. Uh, push all limits because I know my limit. One of the things that a lot of, especially young people ask me is that they've lost themselves and they're, and they're looking, you know, they're worried that they won't get their good old happy self back. 
and uh, you know I always say well you know I didn't get myself back I got someone better back you know and I think that's really important you go back to being happy you go back to enjoying things you go back to being motivated um, you get all the, the, those parts of your life back <laughs> Dieci minuti senza dirmi parole, ma io vengo sempre con loro. E la storia molto avanzata. Something that for me has been the worst thing and the best thing that's ever happened to me, and I don't wish it on anyone. Uh, all I ask for people that have never suffered is to understand if someone does. Doesn't matter, just relax. It's close, look at how close it is. You can do it, man. Come on. <laughs> we play this game, it's called World Cup Final. So Luca's got a kick and it's, we pretend that it's the World Cup Final. And if he gets it, we win the World Cup. And we were doing this before we won the World Cup, actually. See? Good pressure. Took the pressure. Huh? Gabby Evans has grown up in a sleepy town on the Coromandel coast. She's deaf and that suited her till now. I can hear like um, loud sounds but not quiet sounds. I mean I could hear a lawnmower and or an airplane fine without my hearing aid. But it's the quiet sounds that I can't hear. Gabby's the only deaf girl in her community and at her school. I think they're more tied up to stereotypes, maybe because we're in a small town. I generally have to improve myself. Everyone in this school is like um, hearing, except for me. So she's moving here. Calston School in Auckland is one of only two schools in New Zealand that caters to deaf students. I have to learn sign language, which I haven't really used since I was two. She's just 13, and she'll be moving hundreds of kilometres from home. I don't really know much about deaf culture, and so I mean, I'll be experiencing it, but I'm not exactly sure what the differences are. I hope that she'll be able to let that side of her sort of fears and self-consciousness go and just get on with being Gabby and not being Gabby the deaf girl. Bye. Bye. Attitude was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.